Greetings Royals, it is Constance with QueenlyMe.com, your place for tips and inspiration on relationships and pursuing that purpose. If you are single, dating, or in a relationship, we have made it our mission to help you do it the right way, okay? Today I'm doing a book review of Gary Chapman's Five Love Languages for Singles. Normally, I'm very big about having the physical book in hand so I can write and highlight and make notes, but this time I did a little different because the way my life has been set up lately, um, my time is very compacted. So this time I opted for the audio book. So for now, I'm going to answer a few questions about the book. First of all, who is Gary Chapman? He is a pastor in North Carolina. He's also an anthropologist and a doctor of philosophy, but he's most known for creating these five love languages. He has an endless amount of literature on relationships and love in general, and he has quickly become one of my favorite role models. His work is invaluable to love and relationship succeeding worldwide, so you will be seeing a whole lot more of the fruits of his labor on this channel because I'm going to be diving into more of his work. I wanted to read this book because I am familiar with the love languages. I have been for years. As someone who has an extensive background in psychology, there's pretty much no way around learning what the five love languages are. But I was super, super excited to learn that he had a singles edition of this book. And he not only has a singles edition, he has love languages for children, love languages for teens, and also the languages of appreciation in the workplace. Like this dude is covering all bases. But I'm a firm believer that there are no shortcuts in life and there are definitely no shortcuts when it comes to love so I thought that it was fitting for me to start with the love languages right where I am which is in my siblings and I'm starting to learn that using the love languages and applying them to your everyday life even outside of a romantic relationship and marriage is super important just for being a successful person in all areas of your life when we think of love, we think of marriage. We think of boyfriend, girlfriend, and significant others. But it's really important to speak your coworker's love language or your family member's love language, the love language of your close friends, even the love language of the janitor that works with you or the mailman in your neighborhood is really important for just being all around successful in your everyday life. So that's another reason why I wanted to read this book. And that statement alone brings me to my next question. I think every single should read this book. And even if you're in a relationship or you're married, if you feel like you miss out on some of the fundamental lessons that you should have gotten while you were still single, you can still read this book and kind of backtrack and build upon those fundamental lessons. It's never too late. So I definitely don't think that you have to be single in order to take full advantage of this book. I really wish that so many singles didn't despise their single season because those are like magic years. That's when all the magic happens. If you're taking full advantage of it, your singleness sets you up for the exact life that you want. So a lot of people pursue that life itself instead of making sure that they are content and living a full life at the level that they're on. They kind of rush to the next level and that causes them to miss out on all of the fundamental critical lessons that they needed to learn to go to their next level. So when they get there, they're lost. They blame it on love itself for not being all that it's cracked up to be when really they didn't arm themselves with the knowledge that they needed at the time that they needed it in. So don't wish your single years away. They're meant to be enjoyed. You don't have a whole lot to lose when you're single. So that's when you can be adventurous. You can try a bunch of new things. Even in your professional life, if you want to completely change your career, uproot your life, move halfway across the country, you can do that because all you have is you to worry about. And how amazing is it going to be if you take those experiences into your marriage, into your relationship? It's only going to make it that much better. But if you look back on your singleness 
and all you did was wish it away, was chase after a life that you really knew nothing about. There is so much that comes along with being in a relationship, being married, being a parent, that people see like the happily ever after aspect of it, but they don't really know all that goes into making that successful day by day. So do not take your single life for granted. And I really think that this book helps to build upon those principles. This book is really important because it teaches us literally how to love effectively. Most people just love others the way that they want to be loved. And that may sound like a good idea, but we're so different from person to person that you kind of have to speak their language in order for it to translate. So if my love language is words of affirmation, but I'm in a relationship or I'm friends with someone whose love language is gift giving, I could affirm them constantly. But to them, they're not gonna feel loved by me if I don't present them with a token of that love. It's important to speak all five of the love languages because all of us need all of them. All of them are important. Whether you say like, oh, I'm not a gift giving person. Like at some point, you're gonna like getting a gift every now and then, don't play. And don't be trying to seem all humble. We all like a good gift every now and then. It's okay. But we have to learn what our dominant love language or love languages are so that we can communicate that to the people who genuinely want to love us. Because if not, we're just doing a whole bunch of stuff and it's not adding anything to our relationships. Something that I really loved about this book is that he even broke singles down into different categories. When we think of singles, we think of people who are young, people who probably have never been married, but in all actuality, there are a lot of singles who are widowed, who are divorced, who are single parents. And he talks about how those love languages can pertain to and benefit every single on each level that we're on. Most of the book is him telling stories about a lot of the people that he's counseled or helped them in their relationships. And I love the fact that most of the story is based on the stories of those actual people because it perfectly illustrates the love language and you can kind of see yourself in them and the issues that they're having as well. A lot of these stories are super funny because it's a lot of the things that we are going through. Like I could see myself in each and every story that he told about each love language. And it's like, you know what? That sounds like me. But if it didn't sound like me, then it still helped me because it helped me to learn what was true for me in that instance. But the stories just bring it to life. Like it helps you to remember it better. It just, it gives a persona to each love language and how it plays out in real life. I also found it interesting that on each love language for every issue that these people were going through, he would give them tasks to do for a certain amount of time, but he would have them do it with their parents first. And a lot of them kept asking like, what does this have to do with me getting a date? What does this have to do with me finding my husband? He really just drives the point home that you have to start where you are. And I do believe that the relationships that we have with our parents or the lack thereof actually does set the stage for the relationships that we have throughout our entire lives. So it makes sense to start using these love languages with your parents and that is going to not only give you practice, but it's going to carry out into your romantic lives as well. Now I'm going to be completely honest, I read this audiobook a total of about three times. Because first of all, it was just that good. And second of all, the first time that I went through it, I started really seeing like, this is really relationship defining stuff here. Like, God bless Gary Chapman because it's really crazy how like the simple things that we do in our relationships that we don't even think is making a significant difference is actually defining our relationships. It's as simple as asking someone, 
is there anything I can do for you today? Or buying someone their favorite candy or just letting someone know that you're proud of them and you appreciate all that they've done for you. Like these things make up love in relationships. Whenever I get into my next relationship, I'm definitely going to make sure that whoever I'm dating knows what the five love languages are and that they know what theirs is. So thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this review. I hope that you will look into this book and that you will actually get it for yourself. It will change your life. It will change your relationships on every level that there is. If you like videos like this, then I would suggest you subscribing to my channel. And I will also suggest that you subscribe to the Queenly Me blog. That link is going to be in the description box along with the link to my Instagram. Please follow me for daily tips and inspiration on relationships and purpose. And I will see you same place next time.